Two of my favorite things are playing classic Tomb Raider games and collecting trophies on PlayStation. And with the arrival of Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 Remastered, I could finally earn trophies in classic Tomb Raider games. This video will be chronicling my painful journey to achieve the 68 trophies of the first Tomb Raider game, including its glorious Platinum trophy. As the trophy-obsessed maniac that I am, I had a thorough look at the trophy list before beginning the game to sort of map out my Platinum journey. I figured that I would need two full playthroughs. First a completionist playthrough with all secrets, pickups and kills without using any minipacks where I would make sure to save my game less than 86 times. Then a New Game Plus playthrough which I would aim to finish in less than 5 hours with just pistols. Things didn't quite turn out this way, but more on that later. Knowing Tomb Raider as well as I do, I knew exactly what I needed to do for most of these trophies, but there were a couple of them that puzzled me, such as the Feast Your Eyes on this trophy, which simply read, take a close look at tons of gold. I had no idea what exactly this referred to, but I figured it had something to do with the Palace Midas level. But then, as I was going through the tutorial exercises in Lara's home for a different trophy, I spotted this treasure chest full of gold out of the corner of my eye. And after a brief post-exercise swim in the stunning pool of Croft Manor, I unlocked another trophy upon exiting it. Now I'd better take off these wet clothes. I then headed off to the Andes Mountains. A few minutes into the opening level caves, I unlocked the Only the Brave Deserve the Fair trophy by performing a swan dive from the highest point Lara can do one without breaking her neck. I then got into a scuffle with some wolves, during which I unlocked the Apex Predator trophy in midair, and in the same area I made sure to take a close look at the mummy, as I had noticed there was a trophy for looking at two Incan mummies. Similarly, I also made sure to get a good look at the sunstone in the level's final secret area, as there was this peculiar trophy on the list about looking at all ancient time devices in the game. And I assumed this was one of them. The perhaps most taxing trophy on the list was the Tomb Cleaner trophy, which tasked me with collecting all pickups in the entire game. So naturally, I got the Farming Health trophy here in Caves for collecting all medipacks in one level on my road to that trophy. In City of Vilcabamba, I was tasked with one of the more frustrating trophies, as I had to make 11 wolves follow Lara to a specific area, which meant that I couldn't defend myself against them before that. And here we see a rare example of a wolf living on a fruitarian diet. This was incredibly hard to do, as I was also working towards the Hardy Raider trophy, which prohibited me from using any medipacks. Since wolves can't swim in this game, I decided to jump into the pool and take care of the two secrets in the area first, as well as the Why Did It Have To Be Snakes trophy for getting up close with the snake statues next to the pool. The next trophy in line was one that made me play the level differently than I normally would. Usually, I would just exit the room where I grabbed the key and the gold idol through the window at the top, but instead, to unlock the Contixi Viracucha trophy, I had to exit through the same window that I had entered. This meant that I couldn't break the floor panels when I entered the building, as I would need them on my way out. Back to the wolves then. I got really lucky one time where the wolves didn't realize that Lara was unlocking the door and then I ran a circuit around the area to make every wolf follow her. I finally got the trophy, but damn it, I made things very hard for myself here for not allowing any medipack usage. Before leaving City of Vilcabamba, I needed the Circus Vilcabamba trophy to unlock for watching all bears get on their hind legs. It took a while, but by patiently waiting from the comforts of the pools in the level, the trophy eventually popped. On to Lost Valley then, one of my favorite Tomb Raider levels ever. Here I got the Lethal and Loaded trophy right at the beginning for finding the shotgun before heading into the eponymous valley. Unfortunately, I had no time to enjoy the beautifully remastered valley, as I had to make absolutely sure not to get bitten by any raptor for the aptly titled Clever Girl trophy. Oh, and I also needed to, you know, take care of a T-Rex here, which did feel pretty damn epic in not only the remastered surroundings, but with the awesome new T-Rex model as well. I got the brilliantly titled T-Rex Stinked Trophy for killing it, and then I vacuumed the valley for the cocks I needed to reveal the entrance to the Tomb of Qualopec. 
In Tomb of Qualopic, I made sure to not get flattened by the boulder and continued staying as far away from raptors as I possibly could, whereas I got real close to the mummy in the level for the Mayday Rest in Uku Pacha trophy. And before grabbing Qualopic's piece of the Skion, I approached the mummy on his right to make it fall over for the Mummy I'm Scared trophy. I then grabbed the artifact and dashed my way back to the big cave outside the tomb where Lassan began shooting at Lara. But before I took care of him, I swam down into a well-hidden opening and grabbed the level's final secret, which unlocked the Codex of Peru trophy. Upon making a Lara-sized bootprint in Larson's face, I unlocked the Unfound Tomb of Qualopec trophy for completing the Peru section, but I didn't unlock the Clever Girl trophy, although I could have sworn that I didn't get bitten by any raptor at any point. This was annoying, but there was always New Game Plus. The Grease chapter got off to a pretty rough start, as I lost a bunch of health on my way down to the Time Door secret in St. Francis's Folly. Usually, I'd just patch up Lara with a medipack, but I obviously couldn't do that this time, so I just figured that I had to play extra carefully for the rest of the level. But I already f uh -huh. that up in Neptune's challenge room, where I lost some more health upon earning the So Salacia trophy, because I reached the surface of the pool later than I needed to. At this point, I just couldn't afford losing any more health in this level, which was just perfect, as the next trophy required me to jump above the boulder in Atlas's challenge room without taking any damage. Next, I unlocked a trophy for positioning Lara under the falling block in Thor's challenge room. Which turned out much differently than I'd imagined it would. I then unlocked another trophy for having evaded Thunder upon both entering Thor's challenge room and leaving it. Finally, I unlocked the exaggerated threat trophy for having defused all sorts in Damocles' challenge room without getting hurt, but bizarrely, I also unlocked the Dionysius' wisdom trophy for having been hurt by one sword. Shouldn't these two trophies be mutually exclusive? But anyway, who was I to complain about a good trophy glitch like that? Before leaving St. Francis's Folly, I needed to make absolutely sure that I'd killed all enemies in the level, including every single little bat in it. However, there were two bats that I just couldn't get to spawn no matter what I did, which really pissed me off. I eventually figured it out, and let me tell ya. Never before, in my life, have I been so happy to hear a bat squeak in a Tomb Raider game. I probably wasted 15 minutes trying to wake up these two bats. Thank god this wasn't my speedrun playthrough. In Colosseum, I got the Kong's Fate trophy for killing a gorilla in the rocky area next to the arena where only the gorillas can go. Well, and Lara, of course. I then got the Avalara trophy towards the end of the level for having killed a total of 10 animals in the arena from the Empress box. Gosh, there's always just so much killing in this level. But yay, I got trophies for it this time! <coughs> I was very worried about a bat in the ceiling that I just couldn't wake up, but my kill statistic matched that of every single walkthrough I could find online, so I figured I was okay and moved on to Palace Midas where I almost immediately was rewarded with a trophy for doing the infamous corner bug to gain access to a medipack. I got another trophy shortly thereafter for letting Lara catch on fire in the level's fire challenge room and then putting it out again by dropping her into the water down below. I had never realized until then that this is the first time fire ever appears in the Tomb Raider series. Much later in the level, I unlocked the It's About Time trophy for getting up close with the sundial in the garden. And before using the Hand of King Midas to turn three lead bars into gold so I could leave the level, I turned Lara herself into gold and got the Midas's Touch trophy for it. In the cistern, I scared that no good piece of shit Pierre Dupont away with the Magnums and got a trophy for it. Much later, in the final level of the Grease chapter, Tomb of Tihogan, I got the Codex of Grease trophy for having found all the secrets in Grease. And an epic swan dive and a frightening showdown with a centaur later, I made it to Tihogan's tomb where I got a beautiful trophy for killing Pierre. I have always really enjoyed this moment, but the trophy made it even better. I then made sure to head back out of the tomb to wake up and kill the other centaur before finishing the level, for which I got another trophy. 
In Egypt, I didn't unlock a trophy until the end of Obelisk of Kamun, where I collected six items underwater in one breath. This took me a couple of tries, I'm not gonna lie. In Sanctuary of the Skion, I made a major mistake on my way back to the ground level after pulling the first switch, when I forgot to grab onto the ledge and lost a lot of health as a result. The big question then was if I should start the level over, or if I should keep going. Against my better judgement perhaps, I decided to keep going. I got the Do You See This One trophy for grabbing the level's only secret, as well as the Codex of Egypt trophy for collecting all secrets in Egypt. With 34 trophies, I was halfway to the Platinum trophy. So I celebrated that with another trophy for doing a handstand on top of the Sphinx. With dangerously little health, I killed Larson for the Pain in Your Brain trophy, and then I got the Little Vacation Riots Over trophy for completing the Egypt chapter. In Natlas Mines, I got my first trophy for jumping over the trap slide below the level's first secret, which was surprisingly tricky. I got a bunch of other trophies in this level for killing the three sub bosses the Cowboy, the Skater, and Mr. Bald. <laughs> Jesus! And I also got a trophy for killing the Baldy with the shotgun. In Atlantis, I got a trophy for only touching one square on the pyramid on my way out of the room with water at the bottom. And much later, I unlocked the QTN trophy for standing on Qualapex, Tihogans, and Netless Thrones in the throne room. I then got a trophy for trapping Lara's doppelganger, or Bacon Lara, without getting hurt. Which actually was very easy. I just needed to, you know, not shoot at it. I love that the trophy is called Be Like Prince, by the way. That's an awesome little reference to Prince of Persia. And speaking of amazingly titled trophies... Get it? Lara's voice actress is called Shelly, and she just gave an encore performance. After bringing Lara back to life, I got the secret door trophy in the same area for making my way back to the Skion room through a, you guessed it, secret door. I then finished the level, but... According to the statistics at the end of Atlantis, I had missed the pickup. But I am an expert at this game, and I know for a fact that this level has always had just 50 pickups, not 51. So I knew that was bullshit. I then wondered if the statistics mistakenly included one of the level's unobtainable medipacks. I figured that there must have been some kind of mistake that wouldn't matter in the end, so I just moved on. Right at the beginning of the game's final level, the Great Pyramid, I got a trophy for killing Natlas' so-called new breed, or Torso, as I've always known it. I then got both the After Us The Deluge trophy for having broken all shuttered floor panels in the game, as well as the Codex of Atlantis trophy for having found all secrets in Atlantis. And right after those two, I got the Bullseye trophy for performing a swan dive through the tiny pool surrounded by fire and lava below this area. But right after that amazing rush, I immediately got humbled by the game's final boss, Jacqueline Natla, when she repeatedly killed Lara over and over again. But hey, at least I got the Deadline trophy the first time it happened for having found all 36 ways to die throughout the game. Let me recap. I was really low on health for this battle against Natla, which made it insanely difficult to get through. I had to constantly seek cover and only shoot at her for small bursts before hiding again. After like half an hour of failures, I finally did it and got two trophies for it. 
Yes I can for, well, killing Natla, and curses like chickens come home to roost for doing it with the Magnums. What was very worrying, however, was that I didn't unlock the Tomb Cleaner trophy when I collected the final pickup in the game, but I just figured that perhaps the trophy wouldn't unlock until the credits rolled. So I made my epic ascent out of the collapsing pyramid and went down the slope to finish the game, greatly anticipating the rain of trophies that was in store for me. First, the Cataclysm of Atlantis trophy popped for having finished the Atlantis chapter and the game. Then I got a trophy for having saved my game less than 86 times in my entire playthrough. The Leave Them Sucking Wind trophy then popped as a reward for having killed all enemies, so thankfully that Colosseum bat was needed. And once I continued to the game's final cutscene, the Hardy Raider trophy popped for having completed the game without using any medipacks. And? And? Where was my Tomb Cleaner trophy? So I did apparently miss a pickup somewhere in Atlantis. It was very strange. So after spending hours combing through Atlantis for that final pickup, I figured that the trophy was bugged and that I had to wait for a patch to fix it. I was annoyed, but that's how it is sometimes with trophy hunting. <sighs> so I decided to move on to New Game Plus, which I figured would be a breeze since I wouldn't have to worry about secrets, pickups or kills, which was ideal for completing the game in less than 5 hours, a trophy that I still needed to unlock. I had no idea that New Game Plus is a much harder experience. First of all, I was not prepared for the enemies to be far more resilient here. Yes, even the bats. Second of all, it turned out that I couldn't save my game whenever I wanted to, which I had looked forward to be able to after my conservative first playthrough. Instead, I had to rely on save crystals like in the good old days on PlayStation. This was very worrisome, but at least they also healed Lara back to full life when being used, which was pretty cool. Until I realized that the reason they do that is that there are no medipacks in New Game Plus. So I had basically uh -huh. f***ed it all up. New Game Plus was where I should have done the limited saves and no medipacks trophies since I don't have a choice anyway. But much worse than that, thanks to my stupid planning, I now had to complete New Game Friggin Plus, where every single enemy is a bullet sponge from hell with just Lara's pistols. Which absolutely sucked because New Game Plus clearly was designed to make full use of Lara's stronger weapons against the tougher enemies, since all weapons are available from the beginning in this mode and every damn pickup is ammo for them. And on top of all that, I had to complete the game in less than 5 hours. What an insurmountable task I had in front of me. But anyway, I blasted through the game as fast as I possibly could, not just because I had to to get that wretched trophy for speedrunning it, but also because I wanted to avoid enemy encounters whenever possible. I got the Raid Not Kill trophy for completely ignoring the T-Rex in Lost Valley and the Unincredible Tales trophy for letting both centaurs live in Tomb of Tihogan. I still didn't unlock the Clever Girl trophy at the end of Tomb of Qualopec, however, in spite of, once again, not having been bitten by any raptor. Bullshit. Peru and Greece were brutal in New Game Plus, but everything turned into a nightmare once I got to the Egypt levels. The mummies obliterated Lara within seconds, so I had to resort to killing them safely from a distance whenever possible. The problem was that killing New Game Plus mummies with pistols took forever with this method and I was still trying to complete the game in less than 5 hours. Perhaps it was a good thing that I didn't always have this opportunity. I nearly screwed myself over in Sanctuary of the Skion when I ran past the mutants on the stairs at the beginning of the level instead of killing them, only to have to deal with them again at the end of the level when they had been joined by two more mutants and a centaur. This seemed downright impossible at first, until I began luring each mutant individually into the corridor Lara came from, where I could take them on one at a time from relative safety. I died numerous times, even with this cheese tactic, but after almost an hour of failures, I got there. Only to get killed by the centaur out in the open. When I finally got past this nightmare encounter, I realized that I now had to take on Larson with almost no health. But then I reminded myself that I could just run past the bastard. Nice. I used similar cowardice tactics in Netless Mines to avoid dealing with the level sub bosses. Atlantis was insane, I almost gave up. While I managed to run past some of the numerous enemy encounters in the level, there were others that I just had to shoot my way through. And they sucked. 
And if you are curious about how long it takes to kill Torso in New Game Plus with pistols, I can inform you that the answer to that is... 5 minutes of non-stop running, jumping, staying away from Torso, staying away from the edge, and constant shooting. Surprisingly, Natla was easier on New Game Plus as I could use the safe crystal nearby to heal Lara back to full life when she got close to dying. Once I finally reached the end of this miserable New Game Plus playthrough, I was prepared for another trophy rain. Or a light trophy shower, perhaps rather. I was expecting three trophies to pop here. First, the Consolidate the Material trophy popped for having completed New Game Plus. Thank god. Then the Hot Boiled trophy popped for having completed the game with just Lara's pistols. Seriously, having those two trophies pop at the same time was kinda cool and almost worth the misery. <sighs> but I did not get my trophy for completing the game in less than 5 hours, even though the final statistics screen confirmed that I indeed did do that. I don't know what was more broken at this point, these trophies or my spirit. I read online that the Tomb Cleaner trophy indeed was confirmed to be unobtainable at the moment, but judging by leaderboards on psnprofiles.com, supposedly both Clever Girl and I Only Play For Sport were obtainable. So I deleted everything and started over on a clear save to do a third playthrough dedicated to storming through the game in less than 5 hours, where I would also try and finally get that stupid Clever Girl trophy. Oh, and I also finally found out how to open photo mode. And got a trophy for it. When I got to the end of Tomb of Qualopec, I held my breath. Third time is the charm, I suppose. A couple of hours later, I finished the game and finally got my well-earned trophy. I have no clue why it didn't pop the previous time, but why dwell on the past? Since the Tomb Cleaner trophy was still bugged and in need of a patch, all I could do at this point was wait and wait and wait. Until one glorious day when I caught wind of a rumor that someone had found a way to unlock the Tomb Cleaner trophy without a patch. So I began my fourth playthrough more hopeful than ever and stomped through the game until I made it to the cistern. There I flooded the level earlier than I normally would so I could go do an aquatic version of the corner bug to gain premature access to the first silver key. This confused the game and made it possible to pick up that same key again later, making it count as an extra pickup. And lo and behold, it worked! So hours later, when I made it to the end of the game and collected the final pickup, the trophy popped! So now I only had one thing left to do. That's the story of how I got the Platinum Trophy in the first Tomb Raider game. I then moved on to Tomb Raider 2, but that's a story for another day. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. This video was produced by Adam Green, Emmanuel Domenizi, Ladycroft86, Osvaldo Polar Bear, Sasha Mann, and Ilva Lee Anderson. If you want to support my channel by becoming a member of it, an exclusive Tomb Raider Mysteries episode awaits you as a token of my gratitude.